Man has a certain pattern that is, makes him specifically human, and no, no man is born without it. We are only deeply unconscious of these facts because we live all by our, our senses and outside of ourselves. Swiss psychotherapist Carl Gustav Jung was one of the great thinkers of the last century. Together with his mentor, Sigmund Freud, he founded psychoanalysis. His work isn't just fundamental to psychology, but it was also important for the study of religion and literature. Jung became famous across the globe, but today he doesn't seem very popular in Switzerland, something Professor Verena Kast has noticed. She's vice president of the privately run Jung Institute in Zurich. I think that's partly true. In part, it's because of the idea that no man is a prophet in his own country. Americans seem more interested in Jung, maybe also in Italy. But basically, we're struggling at the moment in Switzerland because Jung is not taught at university level anymore. Good morning. I'm Dr. Jung. In Basel, there's a sponsored lectureship for Jungian psychology, but no professor holds a Jung chair in a Swiss university. In Britain, on the other hand, there is one. Some of Jung's work might be controversial, but even non-Jungian therapists recognize that Jung is somewhat neglected these days. But why? I think there are practical aspects. Psychoanalysis, as I experienced it as a young man, four sessions per week for three and a half years, is something that is practically not feasible in terms of everyday life today. Today's modes of therapy are much tighter, with cognitive behavioral approaches, or brief psychotherapy, with a reduced number of sessions. Generally, however, Today's Jung therapists are also able to offer short-term analysis. Judging from the number of foreign students and professionals at the Jung Institute, Jung is still very popular abroad. Very, very popular. In Sao Paulo we have two or three groups of teachers who give specialization courses in analytical psychology, also at the university, where we also have doctorates in Jungian psychology. Jung psychology has become very important in Japan because the Commissioner for Cultural Affairs, Mr. Kawai, was the first Japanese to qualify as a Jung psychoanalyst here in Zurich. He brought some very important basic notions of Jungian analysis to Japan and helped to spread it. Maybe it's the creativity and the open space that allows people to really uh, tap in to find resources that they didn't even know they had, especially children who, you know, have been stigmatized and labeled as a certain diagnosis, let's say, and then suddenly they have all these abilities that they didn't know about. Not only did Jung influence popular psychology and the New Age movement, his ideas have had an impact on management theory and personality tests as well. I worked in international human resources management a long time and I found it a helpful tool to understand diversity. But of course it's one tool among others and only as good as the person who uses it. And of course it can also be misused, for example by labelling people too quickly. But I think it can be very useful. I come from the field of business. The Jungian psychology really touches on many aspects of the unconscious, the personal unconscious and the collective unconscious. And uh, you can apply it basically to every, every field of life and work and study. I came here out of curiosity, but I'm no professional. Jung is famous in China for his personality test, where you determine introverts and extroverts. In China, people don't normally go to the psychotherapist. Jung's method is very practical, but he takes a lot from Greek and Christian mythology, and I think the Chinese are unfamiliar with this. Some cultural barriers are harder to overcome, but in Switzerland, if a chair in psychology dedicated to Jung is not possible, one in cultural studies might be easier to establish. For many, Jung's legacy today does lie in understanding culture. 
The discovery of more esoteric aspects, such as synchronicity or the collective unconscious or depth psychology, led him away from Freud towards something more esoteric, paranormal. But there are also cultural elements. These elements are beyond the domain of medicine and enter a common ground of humanity which interests me more as a person but less as a doctor. Dans un fond commun de l'humanité qui m'intéresse moins en tant que personne, mais moins en tant que médecin.